In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up the will of your faithful, we pray, O Lord, that striving more eagerly to bring your divine work to fruitful completion, they may receive in greater measure the, the healing remedies your kindness bestows. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In a vision, I, Daniel, saw during the night the four winds of heaven stirred up the great sea, from which emerged four immense beasts, each different from the others. The first was like a lion, but with eagle's wings. While I watched, the wings were plucked, and it was raised from the ground to stand on two feet, like a man, and given a human mind. The second was like a bear. It was raised up on one side, and among, and among the teeth in its mouth there were three tusks. It was given the order, up devour much flesh. After this, I looked and saw another beast, like a leopard. On its back were four wings, like those of a bird, and it had four heads. To this beast was given, dominion was given. After this, in the visions of the night, I saw the fourth beast, different from all the others, terrifying, horrible, and of extraordinary strength. It had great iron teeth with which it devoured and crushed, and what was left, it trampled with its feet. I was considering the 10 horns it had, when suddenly another, a little horn, sprang out mm -hmm. in their midst, and three of the previous horns were torn away to make room for it. This horn had eyes like a man, and a mouth that spoke arrogantly as I watched. Thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was snow bright, and the hair on his head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat, Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him, and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened, and the books were opened. I watched then from the first of the arrogant words which, was, which the horn spoke until the beast was slain, and its body was thrown into the fire to be burnt up. The other beasts, which also lost their dominion, were granted a prolongation of life for a time and a season. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one, he was presented before him. He received dominion, glory, and kingship. Nations and peoples of every language serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Be the responsorial psalm. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Give, Give glory, glory and, and eternal, eternal praise. praise to him. Mountains and hills bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Glory and eternal praise. Everything growing from the earth, bless the Lord. 
praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. You springs, bless the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Seas and rivers, bless the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. You dolphins and all water creatures, bless the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. All you birds of the air, bless the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. All you beasts, wild and tame, bless the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. You stand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Stand erect and raise your heads because your redemption is at hand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with you sir. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. Consider the fig tree and all other trees. When their buds burst open, you are you see for yourselves and know that for the summer is now near. In the same way, when we see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. I mean, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. The Gospel of the Lord. The readings are all about the end times. Again, why? Because we're ending our liturgical calendar. Next Sunday will be the beginning of our liturgical calendar. We start with the first Sunday of Advent. So in the calendar of the church, our first day is not January 1st, but our first day is always the first Sunday of Advent. So we are ending our liturgical cycle. I remember an anecdote about the lector who, after reading, the first reading said, the end of the world. And everybody responded, thanks be to God. <laughs> but what if it was a real proclamation that it's the end of the world? Will we still say, oh, yes, thanks be to God? Or are we going to say, uh, hold on, hold, give me five minutes. <laughs> give me five minutes. I think this is important because, again, we're talking about how exactly do we prepare? For anything, it could be the end, the end times, or for anything. One of the uh, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, in his spiritual exercises, talks about the foundations and principles. The first foundations and principles. He says, for everything that we do in our lives, there should be a foundation. And I think it's important because we know of constructing a building, a tower, anything, unless the foundation is solid, and that house, that building will not last forever. You know, a simple shake would really uh, bring down that whole house, that whole building. So foundation is very important. The, the, the better the foundation, the more solid the foundation, the better. Because no matter what shakes you know, the building, it will, it will not collapse. St. Ignatius says the foundation of our lives is this is to praise, to reverence, and to serve God. And that our desire is one day to be with God in heaven. So that should be the foundation of my life. It's that desire to be with God in heaven. So while here, to praise, 
to reverence, and to serve. In other words, if that is the foundation of my life, that desire to one day be in heaven, all my actions, all my decisions, everything I do will be towards that. So that anything else that would shake me away from that, I will not be tempted. Because the foundation is this, God, my desire to be with God. And so St. Ignatius says, indifference. Indifference. What exactly does he mean? He says, things in this world can be used or can be abused. Anything. Money can be used, can be abused. Relationships can be used, can be abused. Environment can be used, can be abused. Anything. But for St. Ignatius, he says, use anything in order to bring us to that goal. You wouldn't simply say, you know, when uh, here I mentioned it probably a, a few times, say money. You know, when they say um, money is the root of all evil, St. Ignatius would say, not necessarily. It depends on the way we use it. Same thing with fame. Fame could be used for our benefit or for our downfall. Prayer life is the same. You know how sometimes how we pray for the destruction of our enemies? Like, you know, oh, my neighbor who always like, you know, every time during fall, he, you know, blows the wind to my yard. <laughs> If God would listen to all our prayers and the desires of our minds and hearts, just imagine, you know, how people would look like, you know, desiring, Lord, my neighbor, please uh, let her grow like some, you know, a corn or somewhere or, you know, uh, ears on top of her crown. But to make sure that anything in our lives, Material blessings, power, positions, privileges, education, our prayer life is directed to that goal. I want to live with God forever. Whatever would help me. And so when the Lord today says, everything else will pass. Heaven and earth will pass. But there's not something that will not pass, will not end. My words, the words of God. So if everything will end, everything will pass, isn't that logical, therefore, that we'll, we hitch our lives to something that will not end, that will not pass? So if everything will end, I will make sure that I will hitch myself to something that will never end. And that something that will never end is God's word. Because my desire is to make sure that I reach my end, my final desire, to be with God. And the only way for me to go there is to hitch myself to something that will not end. And is the word of God. So in other words, everything that we do is really founded on that. The words of God. Our actions, our decisions our desires, our dreams in life, even our ambitions. It's not, it's not wrong to be ambitious, to desire. Again, as long as we know that in my heart, my desire really is God. It's not wrong to desire to be holy. It's not wrong to desire to you know, be as good as we can. We should. But not like the Pharisees that they want to be praised, they want to be recognized for being good, for being nice, for being holy. That should not be part of our desire. Our desire is simply, I just want to be with God. I don't care if people don't see me as, as that. I don't, I don't care if people don't recognize me and acknowledge me as good. 
all I care is, does God see me as good? Does God recognize and acknowledge me as good? Everything else will change and will end. Something will not. The Word of God. And if we want to be with God in eternity in heaven, let us cling to something that will not end. And that is the words of God that will always be informing our lives, influencing our lives, so that everything we do is always directed by the words of God. <clears throat> Trusting in the Lord's promises, let us now bring him our prayers and petitions. We pray for the church, drawn from all nations and languages. May she grow in holiness and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all in civil power and authority. May God guide the leadership in bringing peace to our world and justice to those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick. May Christ, the divine physician, bring his healing touch to their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all who have died. May they take their place at the eternal feast in the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And today we pray in a very special way for Elisid Nicholas, for Maximino Alerta Jr., and for Richard Shepland from this Mass offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for all of us gathered today, for ourselves, for those who ask for prayers, those whom we promise to pray for. We pray again, as always, we pray for those who are ill, especially those who are going through great uh, physical and emotional pain because of their illness. May the Lord heal them, embrace them, restore them to full health. We believe in miracles. We pray for members of our families who are going through tough and challenging times. May the Lord lead them. And for all the intentions that we hold dear in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal Father, through your word, you bring forth life and even more marvelously redeem it. Hear our prayers and answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ, O Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us a bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of divine work of human hands, it will become a spiritual drink. Blessed be God Let us now pray that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of His name, our good and noble. Accept, O Lord, the sacred offerings which, at your bidding, we dedicate to your name. And in order that through these gifts we may become worthy of your love, grant us unfailing obedience to your commands through Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
Lift up your heart. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, a duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises had nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so in company with the choirs and angels, we praise you as with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you're holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jewfold, so that they may be come for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring it to the fullest of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from the evil and gracefully grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. <clears throat> Lamb of God. Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes over the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that those to whom you give the joy of participating in divine mysteries may never be parted from you through Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with and may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. Be God, rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all evil spirits that prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. His father's confidence we find to be, O Virgin of Virgins, her mother. 
the day that we come before thee with strength, send for us powerful. O Mother of the Word, be incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy, we are not sent. Amen. Our Lady of Lords, pray for us. Have a beautiful day. Thank you.